the health of your hearing matters to us. Of course, it does think about it. We're radio. Your hearing really, really matters to me. And it matters, too, to Dr. Sandra Miller of Complete Hearing in Lincoln. Every Saturday morning, Dr. Miller brings her experience to the radio in the conversation starts here. Good morning, Dr. Miller. Good morning, Dale. Let's extend our conversation. Hopefully, uh, good listeners have gone to your website, complete-hearing.com, because there they can hear podcasts. There's a podcast tab and pick up on where we will continue today. Conversation with Mike Murray from Murray Drug out of Seward. We, we just got started in talking about drug interactions, medication interactions, and how some are good for your ears when they're applicable and how others can seem innocent but yet have uh, issues with your hearing. Well, Mike, I think it's really great that we continue the conversation that we just talk about. I think I took away so much from our first conversation is that people have multiple doctors now. And is there a way that there's a communication system happening between all these physicians? Does it tend to be that the primary care is the go-to and then that's where the list of medications is kept? Or does it seem to be that there's not a good communication system happening? What do you see in that area? Well, what I have noticed is, is there's, not a good, there's not a good trail um, because people will go to their primary and the primary has most of their information in their in their in their chart but then it'll be after hours or it'll be on a weekend and they'll go to an urgent care um, and then that urgent care physician or nurse practitioner or PA or whomever has to rely on the patient saying this is what I'm on this is what I'm taking and sometimes as I said you know last week that doesn't always that list isn't always complete and the other thing we're seeing right now, and, and actually just this morning I had a, a, a doctor from San Francisco who is a teledoctor send in a prescription, and, you know, the person had an allergy. And, and so what are you going to do? I couldn't get back a hold of the doctor. Uh, they just don't have all the information. And yet, unfortunately, in these days of COVID, that's kind of what – uh, the insurance companies and, and they're pushing us to a little bit is to instead of going and seeing the physician, getting a teledoctor and going that route. What a great point! I think it's so interesting. To, I love the fact that you are there as their pharmacist to say, "Hey, wait a minute, we can't do that." And I would tell you, I think people know their list of medications. They may not know. I maybe take this for this, or maybe I'm not sure what I take that for, or I just think it's so valuable. And what I took away last week, too, that you said is that the interactions that these prescribed medications can have with all the other things that they take. So if we don't have a full picture of what's happening, how do you best treat the patient, I guess, is the question. It makes it difficult because you just have to ask a lot of questions. And, uh, um, again, a lot of my clientele out here have been with me for a long, long time, and so I know them. I've, they're, I'm on fourth generation of people, families, of treating them. Um, so I can know a little bit about them, but you just have to be patient with them and, and go slow and, and take your time and, and, and try to extract the information that you can because Absolutely. you need it all. Yeah. What I love about um, you, Mike, is the fact that you're a local pharmacy, and I think you know we get to the point where we're always trying to we're trying to find the cheapest place we can get it, and who's prescribing it, and how can I get this more efficiently? And just having somebody who knows you and knows your history is so valuable. So working with your hometown pharmacy, and sometimes is much better than working with a big chain. And when you drive up to the window to pick up your prescription, they don't know you from the next guy. So I love that relationship that you have with um, the people who come to you for so many years. Well, I'm very, very fortunate. My, my customer base has been very, very loyal, and, uh, you know, we have a good relationship back and forth with, e with each other. That's wonderful. I'm really wondering, to now that we are definitely in the day of COVID and all the different things that we are doing, are you seeing an uptick now at all um, with all this social distancing and people feeling more isolated? Are you seeing any uptick in anxiety medications, any depressants, are people, you know, is this has it had an effect on their overall health that way? I really have, and, and, it, and it's really sad to me because, again, I talk about these people who I've known for 40 years, and they're scared, and, and they're very anxious and apprehensive, and um, the doctors are giving them some anti-anxiety medications to help kind of take that edge off a little bit. But then the side effects of a lot of those make it 
it's kind of six one half dozen of the other, you know, which is the the, the worst evil. And uh, but there has been an obvious, a very definite increase in prescribed uh, anti-anxiety, antidepressant medications. Absolutely. I think what really happens too is as a society we want a quick fix, and so. Maybe we could talk a little bit about what happens when people watch the news and they hear, you should do this or you should do that. Um, tell me a little bit about your take on those things of, you know, there's somebody who comes out and said, if you test your, we were talking earlier, if you do an oximeter and you find out how much oxygen you have, and then that's going to tell you X, Y, Z, and people run to the store and they buy something they don't need and doesn't give them what they need. So with so much false information out there, um, maybe we can address that topic just a little bit. I'm not able to watch the news in the mornings very much, but I can tell within the first half hour or 45 minutes of being open in the morning what was on the news in the morning of what's the, the latest cure, be it an oh oximeter or be it um, magnesium. There's there's my vitamin. I, I wiped out my entire vitamin section in about three days when they came out with the vitamin Cs and the magnesiums and the zincs, and, um, and now that's over with. They've gone, moved on to something else. The scary one, the scary thing I think that I see is when they start talking about prescribed medications like the hydroxychloroquines and the azithromycins, where they really aren't, they don't have any testing on it, and and there are factions out there that are saying this is the next cure, but who's saying that? And that that's always a little nervous because medications take a long time to come down the road before they're approved with with uh, tests and, and the placebo tests. and um, So that makes it, that's, I worry that because I have people calling asking day, on a daily basis if I have hydroxychloroquine because wow. that still seems to be the drug. And they've had some results with, in some cases with hydroxychloroquine, but it's really not a proven entity yet. That's so interesting because what we're seeing in the audiology community is that's typically something that we look at because um, hydroxychloroquine is ototoxic over time and taking it, erythromycin is toxic over time, and when you combine those two medications, now you have two ototoxic drugs to the ear, and there's no studies of what potentially could happen. Well, and plus, doctor, what else they're taking that's ototoxic? Exactly. You know what I mean? And so then you throw these two big guns in, and then you really, I can see it on your end, you can have a real bad situation there. Yes. It's so, I think when people are, I, I think it's so interesting. I've learned so much just through this process of how long does it really take to develop a drug that's approved and the trials it has to go through. And when we push things so quickly, we don't know the ramifications and we want the easiest, quickest fix. And it's not necessarily what that's supposed to be. And so where's the information coming from? Who's saying it? And is it safe? I mean, I think you're in the same boat where we're like, we want to do the best for our patient, but keep them ultimately the safest they possibly can be. What I'm hearing when I combine last week's conversation with this week's conversation is medications that have the greatest impact on blood, whether it's thinning, whether it's blood pressure, whether it's a heart problem, and now we throw COVID in on that. Uh, Some people might not think that it would cause a problem for their ears if it's for blood pressure, for example. Uh, Is that fair to say that some of these medications, what we've talked about the last couple of weeks, deal with a a treatment for blood issues? Yes, I would would think that would be a fair assumption. I would completely agree with you. When we have patients come in and I start reviewing their med list, they kind of look at me and I I tell them we do a full assessment of you, uh, not just of your ears. And so we know what type of medications you take and high blood pressure is very much tied to having tinnitus. And this medication you're taking is very much a side effect that it may be toxic to the ear or it may have a side effect of you having balance issues. So when we review their med list, we go into detail of, okay, you're taking these things and you're coming to me with these symptoms. Is that related to your medication? So we talk through that and we also talk about have you discussed this with your physician? Because it's important that, you know, sometimes they don't even tell their physician they're having the symptoms. And so we need to make sure, is this something we need to look into further, or is this simply tied to your medication as a side effect? And if we, you don't know those things, you have to dig deep and take into account that patient of, let's make sure we look at you as an entire person and make sure we address where is this symptom coming from. Dr. Miller, is the ear a tough part of the body? Is it resilient? Can it take a lot, or is it so sensitive that maybe short-term use of a drug can do permanent damage? 
I love that question, Dale. What I would tell you, it's so patient dependent. And I think this mm. comes with any type of disease process that we have come along, how it affects the body. Where is, you, we could use the example of COVID. People, some people are asymptomatic and have no symptoms, and we have people who get deathly sick. And more of the time, those people who have an immune um, an autoimmune disorder, they have a compromised system because of other disease processes that they have, they may have more of an impact on that. And so some of my patients can be exposed to loud noise over and over and over again and have no issues, and other people do. So it, it's really patient-dependent. I would tell you that the ear is very resilient, but the more you abuse it and affect the blood flow and affect the other things that potentially could do damage, over time it is definitely going to have an impact. Mike, in closing, people might be a little shy to ask a pharmacist this question, but if they would ask you to print out a list, is that something that a pharmacist can do, you in particular would do? Oh, heavens, yes. And, and you know, in this day and age of technology, it requires hitting about three buttons and it's done. Dr. Miller, how can someone reach out to Complete Hearing? Uh, best way to reach us is go ahead and check us out online, complete-hearing.com. Uh, give us a phone call, 402-489-4418, and uh, we are here to serve you as well. Um, so we have curbside service at 4200 Pioneer Woods Drive, which is about 72nd and Pioneer. I would highly recommend going to complete-hearing.com for more information. And, of course, listen to us every Saturday morning on KFOR for the conversation starts here. 